Welcome back, scholars. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. I hope you also are doing well. Um, today, we have a fun day planned. First, we're going to learn about the lines and spaces of the treble clef. Now, some of you all may remember from um, when we were in school, we learned about it. So for some, it may be a refresher, and for some, it may be brand new information, but we're going to learn it together. We're gonna have fun with it, and we're gonna learn how it applies to music. Second, we're going to play a game after we learn about the lines and spaces of the treble clef. So I need for you to make sure right after we finish singing make sure you have a clean sheet of paper and a pencil all right clean sheet of paper and a pencil finally we're going to read a story as you know most of our stories that we have read have been true stories and the one on today is a true story as well and it's called trombone shorty also attached with this video you will see a music video um, where you can hear some of trombone shorty's songs that he played with his trombone so i can't wait to read it with you all i read it a long time ago but i can't wait to read it with you all so you all um be prepared for that on today and as usual we're going to start off with our welcome song so if this is your first time joining miss mcfarren welcome and thank you for coming and we're going to start with our welcome song it's very easy so sing loud sing proud and let your light shine all right let's get started <laughs> sure you're shining and have a fantastic day now the question for today is because you know miss mcfarren likes to ask questions what is your favorite thing to do in the fall time it is a new season and we're in the fall season what I like to do in the fall season, I like to be able to wear my sweaters and my scarves and also have my hot tea and my chai tea in the fall time. So share with Miss McFerrin, what do you like to do in the fall time, all right? After you've answered that question, take you a quick little break and go do you a dance break and then come right back with your paper and pencil so we can learn about the treble clef and the five lines and four spaces, all right? So I will see you in just a few minutes. Get all your wiggles out and come right on back. 
All right, Scarlet, so I hope you had a lot of fun doing your dance break. Now we're getting ready to learn about the lines and spaces of the treble clef. Now, if you remember the treble clef, it has five lines, okay? Like you have five fingers, we have five lines on the treble clef. And we have four spaces. Behind me, what you will see are the five lines and they are numbered one through five. And you will also see the four spaces where they're numbered for the four spaces, one through four, okay? Now, the ones that I've circled, the letters that you see that are circled, they repeat each other. So you have a E on the line side, and you also have an E that's on the space side, okay? And then you also have a F that's on the line side, and you have an F that's on the space side. So I also am going to tell you a little trick that I learned that'll help you all out. So with the E that's on the line side, which is number one, it's going to repeat itself and be number four for the space side. Same thing for the number five, which is at the top for F, it's going to be number one on the space side, all right? So if that kind of help you out, and if that makes sense for you, you can fill in everything else. So on your paper, I want you to try to make the treble clip. So the first thing you do is you make a straight line down, and then you come around like you're going to make a G, okay? And you circle around, and then you make a little swoop at the bottom, all right? The treble clef is also sometimes known as the G clef because it sits on the second line, which is our G line, okay? So sometimes if you hear people say, oh, I want you to play in the G clef, this is what they're referring to as the treble clef. It is sometimes known as the G clef. So first we're gonna learn about our line side. We have five lines. The way that you can remember them, E is your thumb, okay? So you get E, G, B, D, and F, all right? So five fingers, let's hold them up and let's do it together. You get E, G, B, D, and F. When we write them on our staff, make sure you have your five lines on your staff and you put one through five for the line side, okay? So the first one, we're gonna write E. E stands for every. The second line is G, that stands for good. The third line is B, it stands for boy. The fourth line is D, it stands for does. And our fifth line is F, that stands for fine. So the way we read this sentence, every good boy does fine. Those are your five letters for the lines of the treble clip. Okay, now on another side, you can write your four spaces. Number one, starting at the bottom, four at the top. Four spaces is easy. It spells a word, face, four letter word, F-A-C-E. If you can remember how to spell face, then you're gonna be doing just fine on the space side, all right? So you have F, it's on the first line, A, it's the second line, C is the third line, and E is the fourth line, all right? So these are our lines and spaces of the treble clef. Let's go over it one more time just to make sure we all have it together and we are familiar with it, all right? So you have E, which is every, which is on the first line. G, which is on the second line, stands for good. B, third line, it stands for boy. D is on the fourth line and it stands for does. And F, which is on the fifth line, it stands for fine. And you can even write it in. Every good boy does fine. You can write that anywhere on your staff if you would like. And then you have on your line side, your four lines, F-A-C-E, all right? So those are your lines and spaces of the staff. Now, you asked me, Smith Farron, how does that apply to music? So whenever someone is playing an instrument, whether it be piano or a string instrument, a brass instrument or a woodwind instrument, these are the notes that they will read for treble clef. They all look the same. They never change. The only thing that change is the instrument, even for people that sing. So when I, had, when I used to take voice lessons when I was in college, 
I had to learn how to read this. I knew how to read it before I went to college, which was a good thing, but seeing it actually on paper is a different thing. So nothing changes when we will play our instruments in the classroom. For some, if you remember, we use our lines and spaces of the treble clip, all right? So this is how that applies to music. It never changes. It's always going to be the same. The only thing changed is just the instrument that you play. All right, so I hope that made a lot of sense and I took it as slow as I could. But as usual, if you have questions, just let Miss McFerrin know and I'll be glad to answer any question that you have. Now, we're going to get ready to play our game. We're going to be using the lines and spaces of the staff to play our game. Our game is called Cold Breaker Game. So I know you can kind of see it a little bit behind me. Not all the way, but it's called Cold Breaker Game. So right now, I want you to get up, do a quick dance break, and then come back with a clean sheet of paper, and we're going to play the Cold Breaker Game. We're going to do six rounds of it. Miss McFerrin can't count today. <laughs> we're going to do six rounds of the game. Make sure you get help if you're at home with an adult so you'll be able to play the game. And if you have questions about the game, just send Miss McFerrin an email, and we'll try to work those questions out, all right? So I'll see you in just a second. So come and be right back with a clean sheet of paper so we can play our game. All right, friends, so welcome back. Now, we're going to play our game, Code Breaker. So Code Breaker, as you can see, I have whole notes on my staff. I'm only using the treble clef right now, and we, are, we have the five lines and spaces. So I will allow you to use your paper to help you figure out the code. We're gonna take it slow. And our code, it spells a word. So we're gonna do the first one as an example, all right? Now, remember I told you that our first line is, oh, I'm sorry, the first space is the letter F, okay? So the way that we play this, each whole note represents a letter that's on the lines and spaces of the treble clip. It may be on the space or it may be on a line. So as you can see, we have three notes that are on a space, there are on spaces, and we have one note that's on the line, okay? So the first one, you'll make your staff just like mine, five lines and four spaces. So, and you can also number them as well if that'll help you. So the first one is going to be F, okay? The second one, we know on the space side, it spells a word, so that also should give you a hint we're looking at these three notes that are on spaces. So our second letter should be A. Our third letter should be C. And our fourth letter, they kind of tricked us a little bit because when we spell face on the space side, our E would traditionally be here, but they brought it down here, which is our line, our first line on the line side, and that would give us an E. So our code that we broke for number one it's face, all right? So I hope you get the gist of the game and we're gonna get ready to play. Now, like I said, we're gonna play about five games of it. You're gonna have a lot of fun and we're gonna spell the words out. We're gonna take it as slow as we can. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to figure it out. And then after you've tried to figure it out, then we'll go and try to figure it out together, okay? We're gonna use our brain power on today. So let me fill back in my lines. And thank you for being patient. All right, so let's get started. The first one, I'm going to put it right about here. And then I'm going to put my second one here. And I'm going to put my third one right there, okay? So let's look at this. What do you think we're trying to spell? Just playing around with the words. The words that we have, um, we have an A, we have a B, and we have a C. So we know we're not spelling the ABCs. We do know that. But what other three-letter word could we use that will make a real word for this one? Okay, let's give it a try. Let's see if we switch up the words. Huh, they look like that could be the word cab, C-A-B, all right? So that should be your answer for number one. It should be cab, C-A-B. Did you all find that one okay? 
Good. All right, so let's go on to number two. Again, Miss McFerrin got to feel hers in there, but you don't have to erase yours. You can just start on another line if you would like. Um, let's do this one. This one may be a little easy. It's a four letter word, right? So we have a third, that one, that one, and that one. All right, so let's figure out who are you, who are these letters, okay? So on our third line, uh, we know it is a what letter? Very good, a B. Our first line, our letter for the first line, we know is good. That one is E. We come back to our second space. Now we have a space now. So we know that the second space is what? A. a. Good. And our last, because we have a four-letter word, our fourth line is a, very good, it's a D. So we have spelled bead. Very good, friends. Very good, very good. Y'all kind of getting the hang of it, I would hope. I think you're doing a good job. All right, let's go to another one. That was pretty good. Let's do another one. Let's put one right here. Let's put one here, here, and here. Now, we're looking at this one, and we have two notes. These two notes, they're the same, and we have these two notes. They are the same. So it should be a pretty easy word. Now, I will say that I did not tell you what these two notes are traditionally called. But if we were to read what this one is, we probably can fi figure out what this letter is. So we know that on our first line, on the line side for the treble clef, we know this letter is probably a what? Very good. So if this one is E, this one here has to naturally be E as well. Very good. Now, if we were to read it going down a letter, what letter do you think we would go to next that would come before E? I think I heard someone say it. D. So if this one is D, what do you think that one would be? D. Very good. So the word we spelled is deed. D-E-E-D. -E -E -D. Very, very good. You all are so smart. All right. So we're going to do a couple of more, and then that is going to be it. That's going to be all that we're going to do. We're going to do a quick dance break, and then we're going to get ready for our story. So let's do two more. And then I'll leave some in the video for you to figure out as well. So let's go to, let's do this word. This is a three-letter word. So this might be a little easier for my younger friends. All right, so let's do that one, that one, and that one. All right. Now, on this one, you notice that we have all what? All lines, very good. So each one of these letters are on a line. Very good for noticing that. All right, so let's figure it out. We have our first line, our second line, and our third line. So the letter that's on the third line is a? Good, it's a B, very, very good. And our letter that's on our first line is a? E, very good. And I was surprised no one noticed that these two letters are the same. So if this one is E, uh-oh, Miss McFerrin can't make an E today. This one is also E. And the word we spell today is B, B-E-E, -E, like a buzzing B. Very good. All right, let's do our last one. And I want you to try to do some at home on your own. Make up some more challenging words because there are plenty of words <laughs> You can come up with, with the um, letters from the line side. So very good. I'm very, very proud of you all. All right, so let's do this one. This one is a four-letter word, okay? We're going to start here, 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 and here. All right? Now, what do you notice about these letters? 
Very good. These three notes, they are on the space side. So you have three notes that are space, and you have one little lonely note that is a line on the line side. Very good. So let's start with this note here. Our, if we were to spell the word face, what would be on the third space for face? Very good. So this will be C. Awesome job. So, and then if we're coming down, remember we're, spell, we're spelling face, but we're coming down a letter. This one will be awesome. A. And then we're coming down to the first space of face it will be very good it's a f and then we're coming down a letter again but this time we're landing on the line side awesome job and we have e and this spells calf very very good now i do want you all to play around with this at home just so you can remember um, how to do the lines and spaces of the treble clef, just play around with it, familiarize yourself with it because it is gonna show up again and you are gonna wanna use it and be familiar with it when it does come around again, okay? So at this time, go take you a quick little mini dance break and then Harry right on back because we gotta read our story about trombone shorty today, okay? So I'll see you in just a second. All right, welcome back, scholars. I know you had a lot of fun playing our game today, Code Breaker, where we had to break the code to find out the note names for the treble clef on today. So continue to keep playing around with the game because you all did a fantastic job. Now it's time to end our day with a story. Now, today's story is very interesting. I actually like the story. I've read it before. Um, years ago when I was um, probably in college or either, yeah, well, I was in college, I read about it. Um, so it is a true story, kind of like most of the stories that we have read over the couple of course of weeks. Um, most of the stories are going to be true this year. So this story today is called Trombone Shorty, okay? Can you see that? So it's called Trombone Shorty. It's a very good story. And it's by the actual author, um, the musician, Troy Trombone Shorty Andrews. And it's illustrated by Brian Collier. All right, so um, this is a true story once again. So we're going to get right into it. Let's see. Uh, now, if we don't finish it all today, it's all right. We'll have an opportunity to finish it um, on tomorrow's video. All right, let's get started. Where are you at? Where are you at? We have our own way of living down here in New Orleans and our own way of talking too. And that's what we like to say we want when we want to tell a friend, hello, so where are you at? Lots of kids have nicknames, but I just want to tell you the story of how I got mine. Just like when you listen to your favorite song, let's start at the beginning because this story is about music. And there he is playing his trombone. But before you can understand how much music means to me, you have to know how important it is to my hometown, my greatest inspiration. I grew up in the neighborhood in New Orleans called Trine. Any time of day or night, you could hear music floating in the air. And look at that. New Orleans is very musical. I've been to New Orleans and I absolutely love it. So it's very musical. And there were, and there was music in my house too. My big brother James played the trumpet so loud you could hear him halfway across town. He was the leader of his own band, and my friends and I could put, and I would pretend to be in the band too. Follow me, James would say. And there they go, pretending to be in the band as well. There's one time every year that's more exciting than other. Mardi Gras parades fill the streets and, and beaded necklace are thrown through the air to the crowd. I love the brass bands with their own trumpets, trombones, saxophones, and the biggest brass instrument of them all, the tuba which rested over the musician's head like an elephant trunk. Where you at? 
where you at the musicians would call and then this the mardi gras i've never been but i do want to go to mardi gras <laughs> all day long i could see brass bands parade by my house while my neighbors danced alone i love these parades during mardi gras because they made everyone forget about their troubles for a little while People didn't have a lot of money in trying, but we always had a lot of music. And there you go. I'm assuming there's probably a picture of him when he was a little boy. So, there it is. I listened to all these sounds and mixed them together, just like how we mix our food. We take one big pot and throw in sausage, crab, shrimp, chicken, vegetables, rice, whatever's in the kitchen and stir it up all together and let it cook. When it's done, it's the most delicious taste you've ever tried. We call it gumbo. And that's what I want. I wanted my music to sound like. Different styles combined to create my own musical gumbo. There it is. A woman in the kitchen making some gumbo. But first, I needed an instrument. The greatest thing about music is that you don't even need a real instrument to play. So my friends and decided to make our own. Just like I told you all, we don't have to have instruments to play. We can make music out of anything. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in our classes. We might have sounded different from the real brass bands, but we felt like the greatest musicians of trying. We were making music and that's all that mattered. Then one day I found a broken trombone that looked too beaten up to make music anymore. It didn't sound perfect, but finally with a real music, with a real instrument in my hand, I was ready to play. There he is with his band. Uh-oh. The next time the parade went by my house, I grabbed that trombone and headed out into the streets. My brother James noticed me playing along and smiled proudly. Trombone shorty, he called out because the instrument was twice my size. Where you at? From that day on, everyone called me trombone shorty. I took that trombone everywhere I went and never stopped playing. I was so small that sometimes I fell right over to the ground because it was so heavy. But I always get back up and lean to hold it up, lean and learn to hold it up high. I listened to my brother play songs over and over, and I taught myself those notes too. I practiced day and night, and sometimes I fell asleep with my trombone in my hands. There he is. One day, my mom surprised me with tickets to the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival, the best and biggest musical festival in town. We went to see Bo Diddley, who my mom said was one of the most important musicians of all time. As I watched him on stage, I raised my trombone to my lips and started to play along. He stopped his band in the middle of the song and asked the crowd, who's that playing out there? Everyone started pointing, but Bo Diddley couldn't see me because I was the smallest one in the place. So my mom held me up in the air and said, that's my son, Trombone Shorty. Well, Trombone Shorty, come on up here, Bo Diddley said. The crowd passed me over until I was standing on the stage next to Bo Diddley himself. I walked right up to the microphone and held my trombone high up in the air, ready to blow. What do you want me to play? Bo Diddley asked. Follow me, I said. Uh-oh. After I played with Bo Diddley, I knew I was ready to have my own band. I got my friends together, and we called ourselves the 5 o'clock band. band. The 5 o'clock band, because that was the time we went out to play each day after finishing our homework. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> We played all around New Orleans. I practiced and practiced, and soon my brother James asked me to join his band. When people wondered who the kid in his 
who the kid in his band was, he proudly say, that's my little brother, Trombone Shorty. Where you at? And now I have my own band called the Trombone Shorty in New Orleans Avenue, named after a street in Tron. I've, all, I've played all around the world, but I always came back to New Orleans. And when I'm home, I make sure to keep my eyes on the younger musicians in town and help them out, just like my brother did for me. Today, I play at the same New Orleans Jazz Festival where I once played with Bo Diddley. And when the performance ends, I lead, I lead a parade of musicians around, just like I used to do in the streets of Trine with my friends. Where you at? Where you at? I still keep my trombone in my hand, and I will never let it go. And then these are pictures of him when he was a younger child. And there he is playing that trombone. So he really was a little shorty playing his trombone. And there's Mr. Bo Diddley in the back watching him. And here he is now as an adult, and he still plays his trombone. All righty. And that's a beautiful picture right there as well. All righty, friends. So that's the end of our story today. And as well as the end of our class, I will attach a video of Trombone Shorty. So you can actually see him playing his trombone and hear some of his music as well. But until next time, friends, I hope to see you again and we make some more beautiful music together. You have a fantastic day and I will see you soon.